This is Paint Life TV. I'm Chris the Idaho Painter. This video is all about fixing paint runs. So if you've got a run in your paint, we're here to help you. So this video is gonna go over all the tips, tricks, the tools, and the products we use to eliminate paint runs. Don't ever panic, because you can get rid of them and never see them once again. We're gonna try to make it easy for you and successful for you for getting rid of paint runs. So stay tuned for this video. This is another one of my compilation videos that has all kinds of video content that I've done over time to show you how we get rid of paint runs. And we've got multiple methods how to get rid of them, including Bondo and uh, True Swipes, um, another amazing product to get rid of paint runs without sanding, without Bondo, reshoot it, and and away you go. So stay tuned for this video, grab yourself something to eat, hit the couch and check this out. And also before you do so, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell. That way you get notified every time I come out with a new video. It's free and easy to do like it's always been since I started my YouTube channel. And as long as I have my YouTube channel, it will always be free. It's a simple way for YouTube to notify you by email that I've come out with a new video. We're never gonna try to market to you anything. We just wanna notify you when we come out with a video. And it's one of the simple ways that you can support our channel also by giving us a thumbs up that you've enjoyed the video at the end. But enough chat, let's get on with the video. All right, the first product we're gonna talk about today is True Swipes, and this is a product created by Chad Flood, and he's in beautiful San Diego, California. It has a business, a painting business, called Local San Diego Painting Company, and he's created the True Swipes, and his company's called, um, this company is called True Green Products. So he created this wipe, and this is, it's a very simple little wipe, and what this thing does is it tells you whether you have oil-based or water-based paints. And it's very important to know that what's on your surface because you got to prep properly. If this is oil-based paint, latex paints does not stick on it very well. You do need to sand and prime or your latex paint could just peel right off that surface. It could be a big nightmare. And so how do you tell whether this is latex or oil-based paint? This simple little wipe, does this, it's got denatured alcohol in it, it's got some other chemicals in it, and I think one of them is aloe vera, so it doesn't dry out your hands. But you just take this wipe, all you gotta do is swirl it on here, and it happens like really fast. If this is latex paint, you're going to have paint on the wipe. And it's probably gonna be hard to see because that's white on a white wipe right here, but there's paint on that wipe and it happened that fast. And so now I know this is latex-based paint and I know that I don't have to do nearly the prep work. I don't have to be nearly as concerned because it's not oil-based paint. If it was oil-based paint, when I'm looking at this wipe, I can hold it up in the light and I can see paint all over this thing. If it was oil-based paint, all it's gonna literally do is clean the surface and there's not gonna be any paint on this wipe at all. And he's got wipes and he's also got swabs right here. This is a swab that does the exact same thing. It just is on a swab. So, and it looks just like a really large Q-tip. So you pull this thing out and there's three of them. So you can walk around a house and do multiple tests. There's enough um, of the, the alcohol or chemical in there that you can dip it and re-wet it. So all I'm gonna do is just find a spot on a door I'm gonna rub it or anywhere where you wanna test it, a painted surface. And now I can see there's white paint on my swab. And I'm not sure if the camera can pick that up. I will get a close up of it here later on and show you. But I know now this door has latex paint on it and I know what I need to do to prep it. I know it's not oil-based paint. But one of the other really cool things about this product is when Chad, I met him at a, um, a trade show, a painting trade show quite a few years ago. He gave me some samples of these products and I uh, took this to the job site and uh, me and some of my employees started messing around with it. And one thing we realized is uh, with the swab itself, and this is with the swab and not the wipe, we um, were spraying some doors and we got some spits on some doors, some small little spits because we're using gun extensions and invariably you're going to get some spits somewhere or you're going to get a run somewhere at some point in time if you're spraying the, the entire trim package of a house. What we did is we took and you can see a spit right here. It's not going to remove the spit on this door because this is one of the things after 24 hours, once the paint is cured, this will not remove the spit. But we were just taking and we started rubbing on it and we literally rub the spit out and typically what would happen 
we'd get a spit or a run on a door or some trim, we would sand it, then we would um, smear it with Bondo glazing putty with a, a knife, we would sand it again, and then we would reshoot it. So we'd have to sand and do Bondo glazing putty. But what we realized with these little swabs right here for small runs and spits with that same day or the next day, we can rub them out, no sanding, no Bondo glazing putty, reshoot it, and you couldn't even tell where that spit was. And there's something about them and it's more more than just denatured alcohol. I think it has something to do with the aloe vera in the alcohol. It kind of gels with the paint and it makes the edges really smooth. You can't see where you actually rubbed it out. You don't have any edges where you rubbed it. It's absolutely amazing and incredible. And all you gotta do is just, you know, just lightly rub and around where that spit is or that run is and it just magically disappears. Today, we've got a really cool product we're gonna be talking about called True Swipe. We've got Journeyman John with me and this is a cool product because we discovered something with this product that it does and it eliminates runs simply, easily, without Bondo and without sandpaper. And this product was originally created to test for oil-based paint, wasn't it, John? It was. Yep, you take a little, they've got little wipes or swabs. You can wipe it on oil-based paint. If the paint comes off, that's how you know it's latex. If it doesn't, it's going to be oil, and then you know that you need to take the precautions in order to coat over top of that oil. So it's a tiny little swab right here, and you would just rub this little, oh, this is the wipe, and then this one is a swab. So we got swabs and wipes. And we were introduced to this product here just this year at the PDCA show in Texas. So the inventor of this walked up, introduced himself to us and talked about this product. Here's the swab right here, kind of like a very large Q-tip and just talked to us about it. And then I got a hold of some of the samples and then John, you discovered this amazing thing that it does eliminating runs. It does. So it's how does amazing. it go about doing that? Well, the, it's a mixture of alcohol and some other things. And I think it's whatever the blend is helps it so that you can use it to basically melt down latex paint runs or acrylic based paint runs. But it, it's the way it smooths everything out. It's not like just using normal alcohol. The other nice part is the swabs as an applicator actually work really well. So typically we've got a door here that it, I think the hardest part of doing this project was trying to figure out how to put spits and runs on this door so that we could fix them. But typically a door like this, if you have spits or runs, you've got to wet sand it, bondo it, and then respray it. And it's kind of a timely process, right? Yes. With something like this, way faster. Way faster. And I do have to say, trying to create spits and runs for this project was extremely difficult because I've spent the last 17 years trying not to create spits and runs. And so I created this big old mess on this door and not, it's not the greatest spits and the runs in the world, but I, I think it's going to work. I do yeah. think it's going to work. It doesn't so. look good and we're going to make it look better. Yeah. So it's incredible. These swabs, what they do. And I, I do, we've kind of been talking about them on our social media a little bit because we absolutely love these things. We actually started selling them on our store because we believe in them so much. And then there's a bunch of people that have been saying, well, um, rubbing alcohol is just the same, but there's more than just rubbing alcohol in these true swipes. And we talked to the guy that developed it, created it, and we learned um, some of the other stuff that's in there that causes it to be able to rub out these runs a lot better than just rubbing alcohol. And then these Q-tips, these swabs are amazing. They're really fat and they're really smooth compared to just a standard Q-tip that you would use to clean your ear. Yeah. So, um, John, we do have some runs all over this door and some spits. So, I mean, we're going to try to show you. I'm going to give you a close-up view um, with my phone of John eliminating some spits and runs on here and what it does. So, we got a few packets. They come in large boxes. So, you can buy them by the box. You can buy them, I think, by the pack. There's yeah. three in a pack, right? There are. There are three swabs in a pack, and they cost between two and a half and three bucks for a pack of, of the three swabs. Um, but to me, I, the amount of time you save to fix a door like this, completely worth it. 
It, it's absolutely completely worth it, like John says, and you can easily store you know, several of these packs in your vehicles. We now just store them in our vans, mm -hmm. and literally for the amount, if it's just a couple, two, three dollars to eliminate a run for two, three dollars, not have to wet sand, not have to bondo, it's well worth the time and effort. It does come in these boxes too, I think. You can buy and buy the boxes on, on the um, yeah, wipes. Yes, you can buy the swabs in boxes, you can buy the wipes in boxes, <laughs> and then obviously there's the original purpose for, you know, like, Checking for oil-based paint, right. which can save you a huge headache if, if you run into that. And that's what's incredible is these things were introduced or they were created for uh, testing for oil-based paint. What happens if you don't test for oil-based oil -based paint? You paint water-based paint over the top of it without prop properly prepping it. It's just all going to peel and scratch right off. Yeah. It's, a, it's a huge mess and it really doesn't matter what you put over the top of it. You're always going to have a compromised substrate. Don't make that mistake for a simple little wipe like this. You'll know exactly what you're dealing with and know how to prep it. So John, we got a bunch of stuff. You, probably, you might not be able to see them in the camera, but I'm going to give you a close up view with my 4K iPhone. And the, the beauty of this is this was only sprayed probably an hour, maybe just under an hour ago. Yeah. And so we haven't waited a long time. It's just sat, uh, just tacked up. So it's just dry to the touch. I know. So people have um, asked like a week later. So if you got the run, can you come by? Can you go into some house a week later or a year later and get rid of a run? To me, this is the most effective if you can do it right after it's tacked up or with an hour or a couple hours after it's tacked up, maybe even a day or two after. After that process, uh, or excuse me, after that length of time, there's been enough of the curing process that's happened where it's going to be less effective and you're gonna have to bust out that that wet sandpaper, but the goal of this is that you're able to fix these things immediately and not have to wait that long. Yep. Yeah. So let's go ahead. We got we got a bunch of spits up here, some larger spits right here. We got a big fat run right here. We messed around with it right there. You can see on some overspray right here how it'll wipe out some overspray. So I'm gonna just video John with the video camera right here. And we got a video camera going right there on John. We'll start with uh, this guy right up there. Right? Here we go. I'm just going to take that swab and work it around a little bit and get that solution on there. And it's going to start melting down that acrylic. We just want to, we can work it around a little bit and we can see the white color kind of starting to come through on some of those. So work around. Just all over those ridges there. And the beauty of this is you don't have those raised profiles like you're going to have if you were wet sanding and it's not curling up like it would if it were wet sanding. And that right there is getting pretty darn smooth. We can use another swab just to clean it up. That right there, if that were the only spit right there, I would be happy coating over the top of that and it's gonna look pretty darn good. So that's amazing. So God, so that was a that was a really, really large spit right there. I created by taking the actual tip out of a Graco handheld, sprayed it, and it throws some massive spits on there. Typically, we're not gonna be dealing with spits that big on a door. Mm -hmm. um, you're not gonna have to do so much rubbing and wiping. But right there, I mean, I can't even feel any ridges on that at all. Yeah. So do you think if you sprayed that right there, you're probably not gonna see that? No, not at all. In fact, last week we had a door, we were messing around with some new tips from a, a tip manufacturer and one of them just left this big old spit right in the middle of this smooth panel door uh, so stopped dried we went grabbed a true swipe pulled it off masked off just that panel and sprayed it with a handheld sprayer and I, I think it took longer to um, set up and clean up that handheld sprayer than it did to actually melt down that one run and make the thing look like it had never happened. So now we're gonna take these wipes and they, they come in little like, I don't know, wet wipe things. And, and where we've got some of these imperfections here, you can even take that wipe and work it almost like it was sandpaper to help smooth out some of those imperfections. And again, the beauty of this is that this was only sprayed an hour or less ago, and we've completely smoothed out some of those imperfections. It's ready to respray, and 
it's just the amount of time it saves is absolutely amazing. I'm going to show you right here the edge of the overspray. I'll have John just take one of the wipes and just you'll see how fast it'll cut through just the overspray itself. So you can see how fast that wipe just cuts right through that. So now we got these, John, there's some of these spits are really, really large and we do have Huge. this scraper. We've talked about this Linbite scraper and it's a carbide scrape, scraper, extremely, extremely sharp. And we've used this in, con in combination with the two swipes to get rid of runs. And I, you know, um, say a drip or a run like that, that's extremely large. Won't we just scrape that down with this and then use the true swipe? We can, and the, it's amazing because when I first saw these things, I didn't think it would actually work, but on fine tram, interior tram, you actually, you'll, you'll just pull on the scraper and it'll just start shaving the tops of those bumps and runs down. So we got the, this is a really fresh door. It's only been done about an hour ago. You probably, if you're using the scraper, you'd probably want to wait a little bit longer so it gets a little bit harder, but we're going to test it out right here live on camera and see if it'll work on this, um, these large runs right here. So let's check that out, John. Let's run this guy right here. Let's see, it's, it's going to pull that guy up and now we'll take swab and we'll melt it down so basically you kind of just scraped off the bulk of it so you don't have to do as much rubbing yeah. with the swab and it's not ideal you'll still have to you know you got to work it around to start feathering that down so that it's smooth because you've kind of created a crater because of how deep it is you know, to me, if this door, you know, if it was outside, had hardened up maybe another two, three hours, that scraper probably would have shaved it a little bit more than pulling it off. But sometimes you're on a time limit and that's not going to be the case. So clean it up here and looks pretty dang, look pretty good looks right pretty there when good. it's all done. Yeah, that's pretty good right there. So that's feeling pretty good. I mean, you can barely feel anything. I think when you spray that door, you're not even going to see that run. And that was a pretty big run. I think this Lin Linbite scraper, where I've noticed where it's really, really effective is on interior trim paint, where interior trim paint is a little bit harder. Uh, after a few hour hours, once it's dried, it's just a little bit harder and is not as rubbery as an exterior coating. Yeah. This was an exterior coating um, that we sprayed on there. And I just sprayed a dark color, so it's a really deep, ultra deep base. So it's kind of really soft and everything, but it wasn't the ideal scenario, but we wanted to it to be dark so you can see the contrast and hopefully you can see how um, it goes about eliminate the runs. But the amount of time we just saved there from not having to stop, wait long enough that we can wet sand it, bondo it, that's gotta dry, you sand the bondo, you might have to do another layer of bondo and then you gotta wait for that to dry and sand that and then find it prime and then recoat it. I mean, all of those steps, or you can bust out one of these, you can, you can go through, you can melt it down and you're just ready and set to respray. Um, there's a re the reason we carry it in the store is because we carry those kind of tools that we feel like are game changers. And to me, this is a game changer for fixing uh, these drips yeah, and runs. Absolutely. And I think one of the key elements to these things too is the wet sanding process. Somebody that's new at it, they're gonna hit the learning curve. They're gonna take a lot longer to be able to do it, do it properly, do it effectively, and come out with good results. Absolutely. Where these these two swipes, man, you can a guy you can teach a guy how to do it right here within a few minutes, and they should be able to eliminate runs fast and easy and have great results. This is Chris, the Idaho Painter. In this video, we're going to show you how we deal about a run that you get when you're actually spraying on trim. And if you're spraying trim any, or woodwork and you get a run with latex paint, we're going to show you how you deal with that. And we got a run on a column in here we're going to be dealing with, and we're going to be wet sanding it and to get the run out, and then we're going to be respraying the column. So if you get a run and you see or see a run starting, the best thing to do is just let it dry and then wet sand it and bondo and glaze it. Use bondo and glazing 
using putty to help get rid of it and then reshoot the surface. Trying to brush the run out or deal with it while it's wet could actually make it a lot worse because it begins to dry and coagulate really fast and it'll leave brush strokes all over it. So the best thing to do in dealing with the run, let that run dry and then begin to wet sand the run and respray it. So we're going to show you that process using a 3M sanding sponge with some water. We're going to wet sand it and use Bondo glazing putty if we need to. So with dealing with this run on this column, got a couple tools we're going to be using. It's going to be the 3M sanding sponge, either a medium or a fine sanding sponge, a bucket with some water to wet our sanding sponge because keeping your sanding sponge wet is what's going to make the sanding process easier and it's going to make it so the paint doesn't actually, when you're sanding it, heat up and gum up and get all gummy. The sanding, uh, with wet sanding that makes it nice and smooth and a lot easier to sand. We're also going to be using some Bondo glazing and spot putty if we need it to uh, smooth over with a spackle knife. So you'll be using a spackle knife if you need the Bondo glazing and spot putty after you sand it. You got to determine after you sand it if it completely sands out. Then of course we're going to be needing our sprayer to respray it. So here's a close-up look at this run. I don't know if we can actually get it on video. You can might be able to see it in their proper lighting but this is the run that we're going to be dealing with right here i think there you go you can see it right there so after looking at this thing we're actually going to take a window scraper and the run there's a pretty heavy line on the run so we're going to, to make the sanding process a lot easier we're going to scrape off some of the run with this razor knife and then begin the sanding process So I've now I've scraped off the, the biggest part of the, the run, um, the, the ridge, kind of the mountain of it. Now I'm going to begin sanding it. So I've just got my 3M sponge with water. Just going to dip my 3M sponge with water, wring it out, and then begin sanding. Make sure you keep this sponge nice and wet. Just gonna take a rag once I get it all sanded, just wipe it off clean, take a look at it and see how it looks. See if I if there's any deep pockets that I or holes that I need to actually bondo. I was using a medium sanding sponge, got it all wet sanded. I got a fine sanding sponge here, and I'm just gonna lightly go over it, dry sand it just lightly to smooth out any more of the ridges around here where it took off all the paint. I can still feel just a little bit of the ridges around the edges, so I'm actually going to use my fine sponge, I'm wetting it, and I'm going to wet sand that with a fine 3M sanding sponge. So now that we got it all sanded off, you can see how it's masked off. You got to uh, determine a section where you can mask off a whole section and respay a whole section because you can't just spray just the spot you sanded because it'll leave a dry feathered edge around that spot where you're just spraying. So we found a nice logical place where we can mask it off and so we're going to shoot this whole face of this column. But I'm going to shoot one shot right across where our touch up is first. We're going to let that dry and then reshoot the whole face because the first shot's going to fill in those areas where we actually sanded and hopefully it smooths out those ridges. I the first coat on this and I can actually see my ridge line still a little bit so now I'm actually going to use some Bondo. I've got some Bondo and glazing putty right here. I'm going to smear it on there and then to attempt to hide that the ridge lines and the run a little bit better and then we're going to sand the Bondo and reshoot it. Close look at the thin coat of Bondo I put on there. We can let that dry about an hour and then we're going to sand it.
back here and we're actually got it primed, it's drying, and we're gonna now get ready to shoot it. You'll see us spraying the thing here pretty soon. How to's. Today we're going to show you how to repair a run or um, some messed up paint on a door. So we got a door right here. We just painted this thing the other day and while it was wet, one of the guys actually touched it uh, when he was trying to get some paint off the doorknob, went back, tried to brush and roll it while it was wet and coagulated, got it all stippled and messed up. Now we're going to take and sand it and try to get that out and reshoot it. So we're going to show you that process of how we're going to go about doing that. What we're going to do is just pull the hardware off. We're going to take a sanding sponge. We're going to wet sand this thing, get it nice and smooth and reshoot it. So I'm going to show you that process, try to give you a close up look at what this looks like right now. So you can see, you know, how bad it actually is. You can't see it really um, at all from the video, but we'll get you a close up and then we're going to show you this process. We're going to remask this door off, respray it after we wet sand it. Hopefully we won't have to use any Bondo glazing putty, but not sure until we start sanding. See the stippling and brush marks. Hopefully, I'm only about six inches away from the door, but we're going to try to sand and repair that right now. So, what are you using, John? I'm using a, a 3M medium sanding sponge, and I got a bucket of cold water here. And we're gonna have a wet sanding, which does a couple of things. It helps soften up the latex so that it doesn't just start um, kind of peeling away while you're sanding. And then it also cools the surface and the, the abrasive off so that it doesn't start cooling out. One area too much and it starts heating up, you'll start to see it curl the paint up and that's the last thing you want to do or else you're going to have to get some Bondo out. Looks like it's sanding out pretty good. Yeah, it's going to look good when we're all done here. So we sprayed this door, I think, what, two days ago? Yeah. So I would be the person that sprayed the door and one of our guys touched it with his hand and messed it up. So we let it dry for two days, that way it's sandable. See, it's kind of wetting down the, the dust. And yeah. It's almost kind of a, a goo on the door, but wipe all that off here in a little bit. It should look close to good as new. So we got it all sanded now. The majority of it's out. We're gonna spray it and we'll use an older tip so hopefully it'll stipple it a little bit and help it even go away even more. So we got the door all wet sanded now, just wiped it dry, got it all nice and clean. Now we're just gonna get ready to shoot it with our airless sprayer. We got airless sprayer set up um, at around 2800 PSI. We're gonna be running a 310 tip and we're not gonna use a brand new tip because we don't want an ultra fine finish because we're gonna try to hide some of this 
uh, more of this um, sanding and stuff and this the imperfections that we can't completely get out 100% by using an older tip that will just slightly stipple it. So got it all masked off, ready to spray. We're gonna spray it, let this thing dry, remount the hardware today and it'll all be done. But so far the wet sanding that we did looks really good. So there you have it, our door is all done now. Um, not completely done, because it doesn't have all the masking pulled or the door mount knob on, but we're gonna be putting that on here in about a couple hours. The doors um, looks really good. You can't see it from right here, but it looks excellent. The customer won't even know when it's all done. So there you have it, some tips and tricks, getting rid of paint runs. Hopefully this is gonna help you get rid of your runs. If you didn't get something out of this that you need to get out of this, just leave it in the comment section below and we'll try to help you out or answer your questions. If we need to make a video about something, a topic that you need help with, leave it down in the comment section below. Also, please consider giving us a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this video and subscribe, hit the notification bell, like we always say, and we'll see you in our next video, out.